Greetings and salutations. It is I, Mr. Nothing, the museum curator of the weird and the strange, and the host who might be a ghost. Welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the literature uh, that I have found in my travels um, that's just a tiny bit strange or odd or unusual uh, or a little bit out of the norm. Uh, so uh, there's that. Uh, today it is Poetry Thursday, uh, a day where I talk about the beautiful poetry that uh, that exists in the world from all around the world um, that has a bit of a, an unusual side to it, um, uh, which is always fun to talk about. So today I wanted to talk about a Nigerian poet who uh, has written a poet a poem uh, about doing nothing. Well, what is it like to do nothing, to have no action set forth, um, or want to commit an action? Uh, you know, uh, you, this author exp uh, explores a little bit. The poem that I wanted to explore today uh, was is by um, a Nigerian poet uh, who is uh, you know famous for writing about culture and um, colonialism uh, and in Africa. Uh, his name is Chinwa Achebe uh, and the poem is non-committed. So Chinwa Achebe uh, is best known uh, is, is best is best known writer for Things Fall Apart which is about uh, colonialism and Africa. Uh, specifically it takes place in three parts with the first part being before the colonists arrive and the second and third part being what happens afterwards and how things fall apart. Uh, the title describing what happens in the book. Uh, I haven't read it. I would be interested in checking it out. I've heard about it a lot, um, but I've never, never sought it out. Um, so yeah, uh, and he's also, he also wrote about how like religion is often used to, by colonial, uh, by colonizers to, uh, to sneak into a country and sort of, uh, establish, um, sort of basis, a basis for further colonization. Uh, so uh, yeah, he, uh, not very happy with colonization in Africa. Uh, not very happy with the, the plight of, of Nigeria because he, he tried to uh, serve in elected positions in the 1970s uh, because he lived between 1930 and uh, I believe it was like 2013 maybe. Um, so yeah, like he tried to serve in elected positions, but due to the, the elitism and the corruption that existed within the, within the Nigerian government at the time, uh, he quickly grew disillusioned and, uh, and moved elsewhere. So uh, that's really his story right there. And so I wanted to focus on uh, non-commitment, um, which is a poem of his, uh, which I will do right now. Hurrah! To them who do nothing, see nothing, feel nothing, whose hearts are fitted with prudence like a diaphragm across womb's beckoning doorway to bar the scandal of seminal rage. I'm told the owl too wears wisdom in a ring of defense around each vulnerable, vulnerable eye, securing it fast against the darts of sight. Long ago in the Middle East, Pontius Pilate openly washed involvement off his white hands and became famous. Of all the Roman officials before him and after, who else is talked about every Sunday in the Apostles' Creed? And talking of apostles, that other fellow, Judas, wasn't such a fool either. Though much maligned by succeeding generations, the fact remains he alone in that motley crowd had sense enough to tell a doomed movement when he saw one and got out quick, a nice little packet bulging in his coat pocket, into the bargain. Sensible fellow. September 1970. So that was uh, Non Commitment by Chinwa Achebe. Uh, at first glance, it might seem like he is praising uh, the act of not being committed to anything, of doing nothing, uh, of, of kind of being uh, a bystander. But uh, you can see, like, he's clearly attempting to use sarcasm here, which I don't think I've encountered with any of the other poems. Like, uh, blatant use of sar sarcasm, where he's just, like, saying, oh, congratulations to the people who choose to do nothing, and, like, and who take no actions despite society needing actions. 
so um, I really like that use of sarcasm, and especially um, this particular uh, um, section where he says, See nothing, feel nothing, whose hearts are fitted with prudence, like a diaphragm across womb's beckoning doorway. Uh, which I, I feel is a very like vivid image, like using birth, um, uh, something that uh, that requires a lot of action on, on, on someone's part to highlight how someone is, is doing nothing at all, uh, maybe even causing the death of something. Uh, it is interesting also how he chooses to use religion um, when talking about this non-commitment. Uh, as in his work, like when things fall apart, he talked about how uh, 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 religion was often a tool of, of colonizers, especially Christianity. Uh, and he, here he talks about Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate it's always hard to pronounce that. Uh, and um, uh, Judas, which is interesting because uh, Pontius Pilate um, sentenced uh, Jesus to die on the cross. Um, although in the years following, like, uh, the Christian religion has tried to distance itself by saying, oh, it wasn't, uh, Pontius, it was the people who, uh, were responsible for, Ju uh, J uh, Jesus being sentenced on the cross. Uh, so he, his hands have, they tried to wash his hands, which he notes in this poem. Uh, and then he also talks about Judas, but whereas people often portray Judas as a betrayer, like, at least he did something. At least he walked away from a movement uh, that was that was doomed because, you know, Jesus died on the cross. Uh, so, whereas a lot of people portray, uh, point, paint him as a betrayer, like, uh, Achebe at least says, well, he, he, at least he had some conviction, like, besides doing nothing at all. And, like, he got, he even got a little money out of the fact, which is very, like, you know, probably be a controversial thing to say, um, <laughs> like, in the 1970s, but also even today, to say, oh, J uh, like, Judas, uh, was a little smart in that. Um, so th that really stuck out to me there. Also knowing Achebe's background, uh, because in the 1970s he was seeking office in, uh, in Nigeria, and he became disillusioned by, by the corruption and elitism displayed by the uh, politicians in, in Nigeria. Um, who might have been doing nothing at all. So this might have been like a, sca a sca scathing way to, to address that what was going on in Nigeria at the time by saying, oh, uh, congratulations on doing nothing. You've really changed the country for the better. Uh, I'm glad that you are my leader. Um, I'm glad that you have power. Uh, so again, sarcasm there and, and like like uh, an interesting way to uh, critique uh, the, the rampant um, corruption within Nigeria at the time. So overall, I would say I enjoyed this poem. Uh, I, I did like the, the, the sarcasm bit from it, uh, and how um, the Chebe uses it as a way to critique colonialism, critique uh, uh, corruption in government. Uh, to, uh, yeah, so like it's it's a wonderful poem, uh, and I it, it really stuck with me the first time I read it because it, it it's really searing. But it's it you need to read it. Uh, you need to understand that it's sarcasm for it to be searing. Sometimes people don't understand sarcasm, uh, but you know, luckily most people do, and and they're able to to get the inner meaning of this poem. I will put a link to it in the description. Um, if you get different vibes from it, or you wanna you wanna talk about something that you noticed that I didn't describe here, uh, feel free to comment below. I would love to have a discussion with you uh kind kind viewer um so we can we can talk more about beautiful poetry that exists in the world especially from nigeria which is again around the weird uh so yeah uh, otherwise um uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe especially if you want more poetry thursday in your life you can never have too much poetry and until then, I wish you the best of times in your weird travels and your uh, make sure to make a commitment and not sit, stand by the wayside. Um, otherwise, you, uh, you may find that your life is uh, incomplete in a lot of ways. Farewell.